Hello and welcome back to the Squash Bagel. In my last video we spoke about the Technifiber Slash 120, which I had for about three weeks and was able to give you a thorough review. And in the week of arrival of the 120, I also got my hands on the 125, which I was able to test alongside the 120 for about 30 to 45 minutes. Seeing that I was only able to play with the Technifiber Slash 125 within this 30 to 45 minute window, please take everything I'm about to say in this video with a pinch of salt. Also, understand that there's a huge possibility that Everything that I do say here can obviously be null and void should someone obviously change the grip as well as strings. Last but not least, I think it's probably the most important thing that you test the racket out for yourself and then hopefully come back to this video and let me know if you either agree or disagree and obviously at the end of the day it is a community where we can obviously discuss what we feel about certain rackets that are produced by all the manufacturers around the world so there's no right or wrong answer so I'm also willing to understand listen to what you have to say and what you have to share so that I can also learn so without further ado we will start the review of the Technifiber Slash 125 and the tone and theme of this review I guess would be less of a out and out review because I said I have not been able to test this outside of the 30 to 45 minute window so we will talk about what I felt in terms of comparisons to the Technifiber Slash 120. If you haven't watched the Technifiber Slash 120 review I would suggest that you go do that right now. I will leave a link either here or here so go watch that and come back and hopefully this will make more sense to you. So the structure of the video will be as follows, which is going to be very different to some of the other reviews that I do. We'll still speak about the specifications of the racket. We'll look at the pros of this racket compared to the Technifiber Slash 120, the cons of this racket compared to Technifiber Slash 120. And as always, I'll give a suggestion of who I think this racket may be for. So without further ado, let's go. So when it comes to specifications, we've got a frame weight of 125 grams. Unfortunately, due to the fact that I only had it at the squash court, I couldn't take it back home. I do not have the weight or in which obviously would be with the strings as well as the grip if someone does know that and someone has had the time to measure that or has a racket at home if you don't mind dropping that in the comment section below we would really appreciate that so i think what you will see in this clip here is that it has quite an interesting shape compared to the technifiber 120 as well as technifiber's normal carbon flex range my wife actually likes to call this the egg-shaped technifiber and i think this is technifiber's spin on hybrid racket. So we saw something similar from Head who tried their own spin on the hybrid shape or hybrid form of rackets. The Head 135X which is a racket that I still own and have done a review so either here or here there is a link to that review if you want to actually go back and look at that racket. This is their own obviously take on it. I think the Head Radical came in with the head size of around 490 square centimeters. This one comes in about 485 square centimeters. The traditional hybrid shapes, which were made popular by Dunlop, come in at about 490 square centimeters as well. So this definitely is a hybrid shape due to the fact that there's a bit of a gap, obviously, in terms of the throat size. The racket comes strong with the Technifiber 305 1.2 millimeter string, which is one of their premium strings that they have available. Also similar to the 120, it also came with that. It also comes with quite a high tension, which obviously some people might enjoy. So I do understand there are players which love a very high tension and there's some players which obviously love a lower tension. So it does obviously come pretty strong with the Technifiber 305 1.2 millimeter as mentioned. And if you do like a high tension, you'll be very happy that you can obviously keep the string. If not, I would advise obviously restring it with either the string of your choice or the same 305 at a lower tension. The 125 Slash obviously also boasts the X-Top technology, which means it has got no bumper. It has that Teflon coated resin on the outer edge of the racket where the bumper used to be. So it has the X-Top technology, which is obviously been brought into their Slash range of rackets, which is not the Carboflex, which they previously introduced with the X-Top technology. With regards to strings, although I did already mention the fact that it comes from the 1.2 millimeter string, it does come with a 14 by 18 stringing pattern, which is obviously a very common stringing pattern. In terms of cosmetics, it obviously fits in with the whole range of the newer Technifiber models, not only the X-Top technology, but the white paint, which accompanied the Carboflex X-Tops as well as the Slash 120. With regards to price, the Slash 120 as well as the 125 come in at the same price. So I guess at the end of the day, while we're going to move on to the pros of each racket, I think if they come in at the same price range, I think you need to probably start asking yourself why would I choose the 125 over the 120 so let's look at some of the pros of the 125 over the 120. Pro number one obviously the weight of 125 grams is something that's fairly common that's probably a weight that a lot of players would be comfortable with 
I'm not saying that players only need to be comfortable with that weight, but it's probably a good go-between with regards to it being too light or it being too heavy. We've obviously got rackets which come down all the way to 110 grams and even 90 grams, and rackets which are as heavy as 140, 145 grams and you know 180 grams in the past. But 125 is obviously a very comfortable weight range for a lot of players. It's probably the most versatile weight with regards to rackets which are made across the board between all the manufacturers. At 125 grams, it's obviously not too heavy and obviously it's not too light. I think you'll obviously find that's one of the pros that people would opt for compared to the 120. Obviously, we'll look at the other ones in a bit. So with regards to the 120, which comes in a head size of 460 square centimeters, your slash 125 comes in at a head size of 485 square centimeters. So this larger head makes it obviously a lot more powerful and a lot more forgiving compared to the 120 and that would even take place even at the super high factory tension. With a larger head size, the extra 25 square centimeters makes it a lot more forgiving when you compare it to the Technifiber slash 120. So with regards to your choice between the 120 and the 125, if you haven't had a chance to test them out, why would you choose the 120 over the 125? So the whole idea of a traditional frame, which is obviously what is shown with the Technifiber 120 is the fact that you're supposed to get two things, obviously a little bit more control and more accuracy compared to your teardrop shapes. At the end of the day, this 125 slash would be what we would call a hybrid racket. So it's in between a traditional shape as well as the teardrop shape, which is obviously going to give you a lot more power, whereas your traditional shapes will give you a lot more control and accuracy. So at the end of the day, a hybrid racket should be the best of both worlds. But the thing is that you are not going to be on the super end of the power range with the players as you would be with a complete teardrop shape and you will not be in the complete control and accuracy range when it comes to traditional shapes. At the end of the day, you can find yourself, and I don't think that's a con, but it can be a con to some people where you are sort of in between power and control and you sort of undecided. At the end of the day, when it comes to cons, although the 120 definitely delivers on the accuracy, that's one of the things that I did mention in the review of the 120 as well as in the videos which are going to come up with me hitting with both of the rackets or with the 125 you can definitely feel there's a lot more control on the 120 and if you're really really looking for control as well as accuracy obviously the 120 is the one to go for but at the same time that does come with a little bit of a caveat which i want to make sure i mention that extra accuracy and control will be dependent on your ability to hit the ball dead center or obviously in the sweet spot. So your ability to hit the ball in the dead center or in the sweet spot will become the determining factor of whether the 125 is obviously as accurate as you want it to be or not as accurate as you want it to be. And I would like to probably say that unless you're a very skilled player, I feel the compromise on, I don't even want to call it a compromise. I think if you're a very skilled player, I think the whole pro and con around this accuracy power would actually really depend on you. So you are you actually become the limiting factor. So I think if you have really good, I guess, footwork, you can put yourself in a very good position and obviously are quite tactical in your approach, you can still obviously get the accuracy that you want out of a racket from the racket like this. You have a lot of players which can actually get the accuracy out of a teardrop racket at the end of the day. So it's really up to you. But comparing the two side by side, if I had to hit the sweet spot 10 out of 10 times on the slash 120 or the slash 125 obviously the 2120 is obviously a lot more accurate and would offer you a lot more control compared to the 125. Last but not least with respect to cons and I probably forgot to mention this in the slash 120 video the x-top technology obviously offers a great deal of advantages with regards to not having a bumper obviously making the racket move through the air a lot better and also the resin technology helps or the resin on the outside of the bumper helps the racket glide off the sidewall in uh, difficult situations. But at the end of the day, without a bumper, as soon as you chip away at that resin layer, there isn't much left to give you the advantages that Technify will speak about or for you to protect your racket because there is no bumper at the end of the day. So that's something that can be lacking. And this is obviously going to apply across the whole entire X-Top range. The bumpers or that bumperless technology, not to say that it has been debatable per se but once you actually start to chip into that resin or you start to scrape that resin i think your racket can be obviously exposed to the wear tear and wear and tear and damage of squash and the nature of the sport 
So at the end of the day, who would enjoy the slash one, two, five? I think, as I said, it could be a con, it could be a pro, but players which are looking for the best of both worlds when it comes to control as well as power. Uh, funny enough, I actually found myself this week using my wife's racket, which is the Radical 135X, and found myself actually quite happy being in between the two. Playing with the slash 120, sometimes you can feel that you miss that extra bit of power or the ability for the racket to be a little bit more forgiving if you miss the sweet, sweet spot. And sometimes, obviously, when you play with a racket, which is a complete teardrop, you might feel like you're missing that little bit of accuracy that you would get from a control frame. So similar to the 135X, as I said, which was Head's take on the hybrid racket, the Slash 125 is obviously technically his take on a hybrid racket. And I think people which don't want to be completely control players and don't want to be completely power players can find themselves obviously quite happy in the middle with this racket. I think if you aren't particularly a shot player, which can obviously come from how it is that you approach your game, the tactics that you use, your skills, your abilities, the pros and cons that you have obviously applied to your game. If you feel that you're not a shot player and you obviously want to be well balanced and want to look at basically all the aspects in terms of squash, I think this racket could be for you. It delivers on both sides, as I said. When I say that it's not as accurate as the 120, you have to obviously realize that the 120 is probably at the top tier of control rackets, whereas your carbon flexes are at the top tier of power rackets. When I say the slash 125 is not as accurate as the 120, it doesn't mean that it's not accurate at all. It really is accurate, but when you compare it to the 120, it's very difficult and it really is powerful. But when you compare it to the carbon flexes, it's obviously gonna lack a little bit. So it's right in the middle between the two extremes. With, with regards to rackets. And I think if you want a little bit more accuracy, so if you're a player which likes the carbon flexes but you feel that you're missing a little bit more accuracy, obviously we've spoken about the accuracy of those tension that can obviously hopefully help you maintain or obtain a little bit more accuracy. But if you feel that you lack a little bit of accuracy and don't want to get a little bit more accuracy out of your rackets and love Technic Fiber, then probably shift down to the slash 125 because it will be exactly the same in terms of weights they offer the 125, 130, and 135, which will be the exact same weights as your carbon flexes, but offering you obviously a little bit more control. I do know players which are on the opposite end, which like the control, but obviously want a little bit more power. This will obviously enable you to do that without sacrificing all the control that you lost, obviously, when you use something like the Supreme Curve or the Slash 120. And I think once again, I want to stress the fact that the equipment doesn't make a player. Everything that I said here could be null and void. If this racket lands in the hands of, you know, the player which is made for, or it could be one of the deadliest weapons in the right player's hands. So I'll encourage you to try it out. Get to a shop, get one from a friend who has one and actually try it out first before you actually make a decision. That's probably going to be the most determining fact. I can say whatever I want about it and, you know, in terms of marketing from all manufacturers, they can say whatever they want about it. And I'm sure the comment section, people will disagree with me. Some people will agree with me. But at the end of the day, it's going to be up to you to decide. You are the only one who knows your skills, your abilities, how you hit the ball, what you find comfortable, what you find uncomfortable, how thick you like your grip, how thin you like your grip. And those are certain things that may change the weight, the distributing, how the racket plays. So it might be for you, it might not be for you. The best thing that you can do is actually get the racket in your hands and test it out for yourself. Yeah, I think that's about it. Very short and sweet. Until next time, take care. Cheers. Okay.
in the middle. You're not going to get the same effect. Your balls will end up short. They don't go travel as far. This one's like a lot easier for someone to just pick up and play with. Volley wise, this one felt a little bit better through the air, taking it short. The 120, smaller frame. The 120 felt a lot better through the air. Um, felt that I was very precise with my drop shots, as well as the volley is a little bit more consistent, a little bit more accuracy, less power. This one definitely, if I want to hit it hard, which is the 125, it's definitely there. It is controlled, yes, but not as dialed in as the smaller frame. So I could obviously play my drop shots, could play my volleys. But a lot of power, so it's coming back a lot quicker. But it wasn't as accurate, it wasn't as controlled as the 120. So I think this is going to be an area where the difference would be in the back, cor the back corners. The 1 to 5 little bit more forgiving, definitely help. But now taking it short in the mid court area, the 120 is starting to shine on the four inside. So I'm going to point out, point out the fact that the 120, if you look at the green size, a lot thin on the 120, the 1 to 5 is a bit chunkier. So I actually put it in close to the other obviously there, but the 120 is the one with the thinner frame and the 125 obviously a little bit of a chunkier frame. So if you look at it where it goes kind of thick and then it comes narrow here around this point, whereas with this one it's definitely narrow around here and it gets thinner as we keep on going up, so it does that. Whereas with this one it's sort of chunky and it gets thinner on the way down to the handle, which is a bit weird looking wise, but yeah, good comparison between the two. What did you feel about the drop shots on the backhand, backhand side? Um, I think both of them. Are, hey, I think both of them are really cool. It's just that I felt that um, drop shots on this one obviously a little bit more accurate as well. Whereas on this one you could adjust the targets, but it took me about a few shots to realize I should be a little bit more forgiving with the targets. Whereas this one I could put it sort of exactly where I wanted to. That 125, I had to sort of adjust my targets to be a little bit higher, but eventually you can get the hang of it to put a good, a good drop shot as well. But um, yeah, I think this is definitely my favorite.